Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Tonight we're taking a look at the new RadioMaster ERS GPS unit. You know, this has been some time in the making since they first started producing these ER style receivers and I've got mine connected to a little battery pack over here on the side. I'm just using a BEC to power it. But these ER6s with the UR ports in the back, very simple connection to a GPS. The wire uh, comes in the kit with the GPS. So when you buy this little guy, you get the wire that plugs into both both of these. All you have to do is run uh, CRSF output here, and that's it. It's pretty much plug and play. Now, it's probably a good idea, although I don't think it's necess strictly required, necessarily required to update your firmware, but I'll tell you that I am running EdgeTX 2.10.6 on the radio and on the Express LRS elements, including the transmitter and the receiver. I'm currently running 3.5.4, I think that's the latest, right? So 3.5.4, any, in any event, it's the latest, okay? So uh, I did that. And the other thing I wanna point out, in the thumbnail I said don't do what I did, and the reason I'm gonna tell you guys what I, what I did was, uh, several times I tried to get this to work and I thought, no, it doesn't work, It doesn't. there's a problem, there's a problem. And what I ended up ha having to do was, uh, there. first off, there are two ports on here. There's a port up here, and I'm gonna try and get the camera to get that. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. There it is, it says in. You can take, and, and I mean, that's tipping their hand, right? I don't know what they are, but they're, they're obviously they're coming. So that's an input port, which will allow something like maybe a voltage sensor or current sensor or some other kind of airspeed sensor, some other kind of sensor to plug in there. So you'll be able to daisy chain sensors together. Really cool single wire configuration. I say single wire. There's four wires because this is UART based communication. So as always, you've got the power ground and then the RX and TX lines. So um, what you don't want to do is plug this in on the inside because if you do that, you won't get the sensors. And so what you really need to do is plug it in on the output side. The output side is what goes to your receiver, okay? So that's lesson number one on not doing what John did because of course I don't read books. You know, I don't read the manual, who needs a manual? Especially when you got RC video reviews around, right? So anyway, that's the first thing. And then the second thing, I, um, I took it outside because I never get a, I will not get a GPS lock in the house so that you can just forget that. Won't get it, so I took it outside. I sat outside for a while, I didn't get a lock. In fact, if you watch the recent uh, Avanti Maiden, uh, it was in that plane, and I was trying to get a GPS lock, and it just didn't seem to do it. I was having a terrible time with it. So at the end of the day, what I what you know, I took it out of the Avanti. I contacted Radio Master, said, "Hey, I'm having some problems," and we talked about it a little bit. And he said, "You know what? Just leave it outside." <laughs> so I put it outside, and it took about six minutes for the first lock. That's thing number two. You got to give it time on the first lock, and evidently, after it gets its first lock you get a uh, almanac almanac that's uh, loaded onto the flash on the on the device so after that subsequent gps lock should be much faster okay all right one last thing i want to tell you about real quickly is there are two modes on this gps there is a uh, speed mode and a position mode and you can change those by pressing this little button right there you see that button if i press and hold that for just a second it should change if i can get it pressed there there's the there's the position mode and then here's the speed mode. And the only thing that matters, the only thing that does is it gives the updates faster. So I talked to Radio Master about this to get specifics. In the speed mode, you're getting updates, 10 hertz updates. Uh, I didn't get the refresh rate on the position mode, but the updates come a little bit farther between. Uh, but the sensor data that you get is the same. You get the same sensor data. So it's not like it's not like if you put it in speed mode, you lose, you lose information. Then one other thing, one other thing I'll tell you about it that I learned is that um, I'll show you the sensors in just a minute, but if you pair the ERS GPS unit with a receiver that's got a barometer, then you'll also get altitude. So uh, the ER6 has that feature, so does the ER8 and a handful of others. So check the compatibility page on the website, and we'll, we'll go check that out in a little bit. But check the compatibility page for uh, the information related to altitude, if that means something to you. So uh, that's it. Now, I wanna show you guys a couple of quick things. You might say, well, what the hell do we need a GPS for? Let me show you a couple of quick things you can do with it, just, just for fun, right? Um, oh, and by the way, in the box, you get the, the unit and the cable. That's it, very simple. Okay, so a couple quick things you can do with it. I thought I thought we'd just have a little bit of fun and play around. So the first thing that I did was get my handy dandy pointer over here. 
So the first thing that I did was created a logical switch that says a, if a is less, a is greater than x, and the value that I'm expect, inspecting is uh, ground speed, and, and that value exceeds 100 miles per hour, then I want L01 to go on. Now, I can't simulate that here on the desk. So what I did was I made a special function using the same exact switch. So L01 would be the one you'd use in practice. For my demonstration, we'll use my idle up switch, which is right here. So in this case, what'll happen, if I hit 100 miles an hour, I'm gonna simulate that by flipping my, uh, my SA switch to the up position, and I've got an audio track that can play. Hot stuff coming through, 100 miles per hour. Wahoo, right? So that's pretty cool. And, and you know, it's just something you can do if you want to, say, work on a speed. You know, if you're, if you're into speed and you want to see if you can crack some speed level, you can set a logical switch up to just say, hey, when I hit 80 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour or whatever, um, then I want that logical switch to go active. And you can set up a special function to play your, your track to say, hey, you made it. You made 100 miles an hour. Um, one other thing I want to mention that's kind of important, and it's a nice feature on this, and I'm told by Radio Master there's a Lua that will give you the last recorded GPS position. So if you want to find your plane, if you have a plane that goes down or a model that goes down, and you're logging data, you can get the GPS coordinates off the unit and onto your SD card, just do do yourself one favor, make sure you connect that SD logging to a switch. In my case, my throttle cut is up here. So when I turn that on, you can see that is now active. So I've got SD logging, which means any GPS data that I'm getting from the unit, which will be, I'll show you the GPS stuff, it's down here. Of course, I don't, I don't, I don't get it in the house, right? So just to be clear, I don't get it in the house. But I'm gonna hide that just in case. There we go. So there's GPS data altitude, satellites, ground speed, heading, all that information can be logged. And so if your model goes down, you can use that Lua script to find your lost model. So that's another cool little feature on GPSs. So the three use cases we covered, uh, speed, uh, altitude, if you have a barometer, and lost model recovery. And, and by the way, um, don't forget the thing that I did with speed. You could also do that with altitude. You can say, hey, 400 feet. You know, there's a rule. You're not supposed to exceed 400 feet. So you could put that in there and, and say, I want to trigger when I hit 400 feet. And that way you get an alarm if you hit the ceiling and you want to stay, keep yourself compliant. Kind of cool, right? Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the setup on the radio, some of the cool stuff that's going on on the radio. Now let's take a look at the specifications. So let's flip over to the desktop and somebody left a comment mike morales says he can't make out anything you're saying but i'm looking like everything is all green on my side so if you guys let me know just leave me a note in comments if you're hearing everything i'm saying okay seems like it should be fine okay i'm going to clear the desk a little bit we're going to unplug because we don't need power anymore and we're going to bring in some we're going to bring in some equipment to do some measuring and let's take a look at the website. This, the link is in the description if you'd like to pick one up for yourself. They are available on retail. As you can see, $26 right there, $26.99. Let's see if I can rearrange things just a little bit. And again, I'm looking for an audio check if you guys don't mind. I think my audio is fine, but yeah, if, if you don't mind. So $26.99 for the uh, retail price. And then in terms of um, the guidance they give, the telemetry sensor works with ELRS PWM receivers. It's plug and play for receivers with the CRS interface, CRSF interface, and that's what I showed you on the back. That is this interface right here. It's the one underneath the antennas. That's the CRSF interface, all right? So it's plug and play if you have a receiver with that type of interface. Um, and um, it says mode one to provide accurate GPS data and mode two to provide accurate ground speed. Mode one is ideal capturing position and altitude when logs, uh, altitude logs when used with our ER series receivers with built-in barometers. All right. A couple of guys say they're hearing me just fine, Mike. So it looks like it's you. Thanks guys for checking. Appreciate that. All right. Additionally, the ERS GPS features a pass-through function allows for easy future expansion. That's the pass-through that I talked about earlier. So that input port right there, that's what that's for. So you can do daisy chaining later on down the road. Okay, we covered the uh, speed mode and the, and the pass-through mode and the integration. So let's get into specs. We'll go down to the specs here just a little bit and do a little bit of validation. You know, I like to check people's work, right? 
So I'm going to set the radio off to the side. And what they're saying here is 25 millimeters wide. So let's close the mic here, zero it out at zero. That looks good. I'll zero that one more time. Okay. So they're saying 25.5 millimeters. And I've got it at about 24.07. Okay, fine. One, one and a half mil smaller than the spec. Uh, the height, it looks like they're saying 12.8. I'm showing 12.3538. Okay. And then in terms of the length, they're saying 32.8 mil, and that looks dead on. So I got 32.84 exactly. Okay, so that's good. And then in terms of weight, they say the weight is 13.35. Let's see. Let's see what my scale says. 13. All right, I'm good with that. So yeah, spec-wise looks pretty good. And uh, remember, compatible, I told you we'd check this out on the website, compatible receivers, ER6, ER8, ER8, G, GV, and uh, ERA GV, okay? And um, that's about it. That's the that's the Radio Master uh, GPS unit. So kind of cool, 26 bucks. I think with a combined with an ER6, you're like 25 bucks, so double up, right? It's 24 and 26, so you're at 50, 50 bucks, and you've got a really good, really good, this is like my mainstay receiver for just about everything I fly these days. So ER6, mainstay receiver, Pair that up with a GPS if you want. Fun to put in something like a jet or a fast mover, or you know, if you're flying one of your bigger planes or smaller, you know, smaller planes that you're afraid could be could get lost. Fairly small unit, uh, definitely smaller than other GPS units I've had in the past that are standalone. So very, very nice and plug and play. I like it. I think this is a great uh, sign of things to come from Radio Master. So I give them two thumbs up on this one. Thanks to Radio Master for sponsoring the video and sending the little GPS unit out for review. Again, I've got affiliate links in the description if you'd like to pick one up for yourself. And uh, regarding your setup, oh, one other quick little thing I wanna show you on the screen. If you just wanna have a little fun, when, when I did, oh yeah, I forgot, I've got a road test video, I've gotta show you that. But uh, I, I use this for the road test video, so if you wanna do a setup on your radio, you can set up a ground speed sensor and a ground speed plus, that'll give you your max speed and your current speed. And yeah, let's do the road test, because I forgot to show you that and I did all the work for it. So here, here's me testing the accuracy of the GPS on the road. All right, I've set the cruise control on the car to 32 miles an hour, and we're measuring the Radio Master GPS speed, and you can see on the radio, we're at about 32 miles an hour. I'm seeing 31.7 and fluctuations just over, you know, over 32. So I would say overall, the speed looks very accurate. Unfortunately, where I live, it's flat as a pancake, so I can't do any altitude testing for you, but based on this cursory view in the car with a cruise control set, I'd say the speed looks like it's pretty well dead accurate. Yeah, there you go. So I did the road test just to validate that the speed was accurate. And it, it's like, you know, it fluctuates to within, you know, 0.3 miles per hour, which is fine for hobby stuff. No problems there. If you want scientific <laughs> grade speeds, you might have to invest a little more money. But I'd say for 20, 26 bucks, they pretty well hit the mark for me. That makes me pretty happy. So anyway, that wraps up my first look at the Radio Master ERS GPS unit. And uh, yeah, I'll probably get a couple of these and stick them in like my fast movers or maybe, you know, little models that might easily get lost in the tall grass somewhere. That might be a good use for them. So if you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.